Apple wants to create the best user experience have a lot of uh, innovation out there to get c customers to be able to buy their product and stay on the Apple operating system, which goes way beyond simply the phone. It includes Apple Pay, it includes photographs, videos, and basically putting your whole life and wallet into the Apple community. We think that demand is outpacing supply simply because Apple is innovating, and we think that's an appealing characteristic. Whether supply catches up with demand, it just time will tell. But anytime you launch a new product and people want it, that's a good problem for Apple to have. Yeah, uh, David, some believe by the time uh, they can create more supply, Samsung will have recovered from all of this. Well, that could be. Uh, again, we uh, at Wedgwood, we've been shareholders continuously in Apple since uh, late 2005. And we try to take a little bit of, of a longer view um, just a comment or two on the recent results and your earlier, your earlier uh, uh, commentary with Jim Cramer. I've been reading Jim Cramer at Real Money for years, and uh, I actually think Jim didn't go far enough. I think that um, despite what Tim Cook has tried to do over the past couple of years, he probably can't please many on Wall Street. But as a shareholder, um, we're very pleased by the results, and customers apparently are very pleased by these products. Uh, it occurs to me that if Apple was a private company, um, and after $16 billion uh, in operating cash flow, a record this past quarter, $12 billion in free cash flow, um, we might be popping champagne cork, corks instead of maybe obsessing over the next quarter or two. Again, I don't think Jim went far enough. I think perhaps that uh, Tim Cook needs to take a page out of Warren Buffett's book and maybe dispense with the quarterly conference calls and just have one big analyst day, one big shareholder day, like Buffett has in Omaha, I'm sure Cupertino would like to have an event like that. You know, there are certainly some companies who have taken that advice to heart, but Jim, when you look at just the numbers for Apple, the guidance for the next quarter is for revenues to grow at the midpoint just 2%. Is that Apple doing something wrong, or is that just what happens when a company gets this big and its market is this saturated? Well, great observation, but you have a couple interesting characteristics. First of all, foreign exchange is a real headwind to the company. Apple sells its products globally, and they sell those in local currency. So foreign exchange is a real, real headwind for Apple. Second, keep in mind that they have not updated their Mac product lineup for three years, and the Macs have materially disappointed investors. We'll be there live tomorrow, which we believe they're going to update their MacBook lineup, so wait for an update for that. But tomorrow we expect more news coming out of it. But the iPhone 8, we believe next year, when Apple hits its 10-year anniversary for the iPhone, is going to be a very big super cycle. And we believe the results and outlook are quite encouraging, but do note the stock was up over 20 percent in three months. But David, there is a question of whether Apple underestimated demand for the iPhone, uh, the iPhone 7, whether they'll be able to appropriately gauge the demand for this generational shift in iPhones next year, or if all the people who had been waiting to upgrade already did, even ahead of that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the days of Apple really um, getting really tight with their forecast and, and, and gauging demand, those days are over. When, you were, when they were rolling out new carriers and filling the channel for new carriers, they had obviously significant insight on what that demand is going to be. But think about, think about where the iPhone franchise is right now. When you're thinking of, of unit sales over the next couple of years, at a minimum, with, a, with an installed base approaching 600 million, uh, people upgrading every, say, two to three years, at a minimum, you're going to pencil in 200 million units per year. Uh, at 40% gross margins, even 38, 39% gross margins uh, across an iPhone uh, product line, that's a great business to be in. And uh, as, as shareholders, we remain very bullish going forward. I, I would echo Jim's comment. Uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal 2018 should be a really big year. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.